it's important you understand this we're not here just to gist and wear and while away time we're not just here to spectate and clap for others we are here determined to receive personally god has a program for everyone god has a package for everyone even at a very strategic service like this but whether or not you will receive your portion is up to you and my assignment is to be like a prophetic midwife to guide your faith to stir up your heart as we brace up to receive that which the lord has for us hallelujah you know by now that supernatural solutions and supernatural answers of all kinds do not just appear in the life of a believer they are provoked by engaging specific kingdom keys let me say that again supernatural solutions supernatural answers do not just appear because of desire they are provoked they are provoked by engaging specific kingdom keys there are keys that are allocated to answers that means that just because you want to be healed just because you want to be delivered just because you are tired of a current situation does not guarantee that you will find answers does not guarantee that you will find solutions in fact surprisingly so just because God is in the midst of his people does not guarantee that you will walk away with answers there were many people who came to Jesus's crusades unfortunately the bible does not record that every one of them walked with their solutions and their desires met there were people who walked away not being healed there are times the bible will say he healed them all i used to think he healed all those who were in the crusade ground but he healed all those who came to him and all those who were interested in getting his power to their lives hallelujah you can be in a place where the healing anointing is flowing like a river where graces are flowing like a river where the power to deliver is flowing like a river and it never gets to you because the assignment of the river is to flow the assignment of the one who is thirsty is to know how to tap into the flowing river are we together now the well does not come to your house the assignment of the well is to always have water your assignment is to take that initiative and fetch your portion enough the well does not complain no matter how much you fetch provided you get there and take the responsibility it says with joy shall you you not god draw from the wells of salvation there are abundant riches that the wells of salvation carry are we together the word salvation is the word soteria also expressed as the word sozo when it has to do with healing and vitality and wholeness so deliverance is part of salvation breakthrough is part of salvation any and everything that upgrades you to manifest the god life in experience they are found within that well of salvation but whether or not you will enjoy it it does not depend on the well it depends on your ability to cooperate with god and fetch your portion jesus met a woman at the well the well was not in her house she had to leave her house and she got to the well took initiative and while she was fetching jesus came and had that encounter with her i'm saying this because most times believers just think that because you are in the presence of god that is all there is to do as far as receiving from god is concerned being in the presence of god gives you access to his power access to his wisdom access to angelic activities but it does not mean you will walk away with your testimony are we together so you must be prepared to engage appropriately and my assignment tonight as always is to guide you i will not leave you in limbo as to what to do there is always an instruction connected to every miracle service our assignment is through prayer through alignment to receive the instruction that God would have us obey as far as receiving what he has in store for us is concerned. So yours is to listen and engage. If you are here and you are sick and you are just hoping, well, let's see what happens. You will be surprised that we'll share the grace and you'll walk away with no healing. You'll walk away with the curses, the yokes and everything there. So don't be distracted. Have this at the back of your mind already that there is a responsibility component to my receiving. 
Did you get that? There is a responsibility component to my receiving. And the first responsibility is to listen. The first responsibility is the hearing of faith. If you cannot hear, you are not even aware of what God wants to do. The Bible says they came to him to hear and to be healed. To hear and to be healed. Hearing exposes you to all the varieties, the miracles, the things that God can do, the things that he wants to do. Then you connect by faith. Are you ready now? So that you do not waste your moment, you do not waste this Kairos prophetic moment. I truly believe with all my heart that tonight is a very Kairos moment for someone. That you came by the Spirit so that there be a deposit upon your head, upon your life, that God will redefine your possibilities and may that be your portion in Jesus' name. I'm only speaking to one who has faith to believe. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. God is still in the business of setting the captives free. God is still in the business of liberating the oppressed. God is still in the business of healing the sick and healing the broken hearted. God is still in the business of restoring things, restoring time, restoring relationships. Is someone learning now? God is still in the business of empowering destinies supernaturally, placing graces upon destinies, placing anointings upon destinies, opening up doors, revealing people, bringing them to their prophetic season. He did not stop. He's never stopped. He's still in the business of setting the captives free. He has never stopped. He still is in the business of liberating people, opening up closed doors, prison doors. God is still in the business of answering the questions that have plagued men and families. Questions like, will this ever end? Answer, surely there is an end. Surely. It didn't just say there is an end. It says surely, certainly there is an end. That means reproach can end. That means shame can end. Is someone hearing me? That means delay can end. That means stagnation can end. God is in the business of ending everything that is not of God. I like what the Bible says, that the later part of Job's life, if you never read Job chapter 42, you will hate the story of Job. It will portray a very bad picture of God. But I like 42 and verse 10. The Bible says God turned again. He restored. He turned again the captivity of Job. He turned again the captivity of Job. He's turning again the captivity of someone. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says turn again our captivity like the streams of the south or the streams of the Negev. It is possible to sow in tears today but it is also possible to reap in joy. God is still in the business of changing destinies. God is still in the business of opening new chapters. A new chapter means new story. A new chapter means yesterday is gone forever. Are we together? Yes. The beauty of a movie is that it is progressive. There is no movie that has one scene forever. That is not even a movie in the first place. Your, no matter what bad happens within a movie, your consolation is that there are other scenarios programmed that will be consoling. Are we together? The beauty of a book is that there are other chapters that you have not read. So no matter how bad the current chapter you are reading is the consolation. And sometimes when you are too afraid, you go back and check the name of the book. The name of the book gives you an idea of how the book ends. If you are reading a book that says season of victory and you are reading and you are in a page where there is chaos and darkness and gloominess, you find consolation that the name has already predicted the end. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. That's someone's testimony. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Turn it for good. One more time. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You 
what the enemy meant for evil. Can you turn it for good? Turn it for good. God is still in the business of giving new body organs, new body parts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. Destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. God is still in the business of opening career doors. The matters that affect life and godliness. God is not just interested in the matters of godliness. The matters of godliness talks of spirituality. You're knowing God. You're growing spiritually. The health of your prayer life. But there are matters that pertain to life. Your children's school fees. Matters that pertain to life. Your promotion. God is benevolent enough to spread his power. To cover solutions across all grounds. Don't just focus on receiving answers to the matters of spirituality and godliness. And leave the matters that pertain unto life. The Bible says according as his divine power. Has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness life and godliness that whilst you are loving Jesus serving him your spiritual life on fire your prayer life on fire he's also sorting your finances opening doors for you taking away shame you are a better portrait of a Christian when the matters of life and godliness are sorted you believe that shout amen, amen. so there are many believers who feel guilty opening up their hearts to receive answers as pertaining matters of life because somehow we have indoctrinated ourselves that when you start crying for things I know that our our work with God should not just be based on things but God is a benevolent father and I have taught you the character of fatherhood is that you want to see your children happy if you being evil know how to give good gifts God does not give bad gifts good gifts there are people who already have money there are people who have the matters of life sorted their children are doing well are we together their lives their corporations are doing well their major problem are the matters that deal with godliness they are prospering everything is working well they are like the rich fool for want of word as far as the matters of life is concerned by God's grace they are sorted but it is at the expense of their spiritual life their prayer life their love for God you are welcome to this miracle service because God can bring that balance he can plant a fire that you should not just be a prosperous unbeliever an intelligent unbeliever you can encounter God he can sort your prayer life he can sort your word life are we together he can plant something upon you fire for the things of God that brings balance you become a better portrait of a Christian when that happens but let me tell you the truth for most people especially most people gathered here tonight fairly so we have done well as far as pressing for spirituality is concerned most people here i presume and i'm safe to do so that you are doing well spiritually you love god there's always room for more most people love god they don't have a problem fasting they don't have a problem praying they don't have a problem studying the word of god they don't have a problem with the house of god but the spirituality is being greatly interrupted because there are many things as far as the matters of life are concerned house rent or house children's school fees huh? a vehicle mobility food and let me tell you the truth a responsible god and a responsible ministry must stretch to allow the power of god attend to the needs of people on both sides are we together yes you will never have your spiritual life robust and healthy and then i do not care whether your children are doing well whether you are making progress whether you are being promoted you are 20 years in a corporation you are not promoted it is it is god is concerned and i am concerned too and in the name of jesus there has to be an answer over that situation tonight the bible says hitherto you have asked for nothing it says ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full 
joy may be full. Genesis 21 and verse 1. Now Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Bible says, oh Genesis 24 verse 1, my apologies. Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Bible says the Lord had blessed him in how many things? All things, all things, all things. The matters of life and the matters of godliness. I'm saying this to prime your faith so that you don't just choose one, you can open your heart for all. Lord, as you're causing me to love you, let my finances also give me room to worship you well so that my worship is not cut short by worries. You take what the enemy meant for evil you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'll share with you a few kids now. I will give you four of them and then we begin to pray. And please be sensitive whilst we receive these keys because the Bible says, and as he taught them, the power of God was present to heal. I want you to be determined tonight in the name of Jesus Christ that you will walk away out of this place with a spiritual souvenir. That it must be evident. You know how you go for a wedding or a birthday party and then you pick your own. Only that you don't need to fight over anything. Your own has, has your name on it. So it's not like it's kept there and then you come and fight yourself. You know how people do it at weddings. You carry this, hide this, then put your own, then put the extra food. No. This one has your name. So anybody that carries it, you can tell him, no, it is El Shaddai serving. I've taught you about El Shaddai. El Shaddai means the multi-breasted one. That means he does not have to victimize you to bless me. He can bless all of us and he's still sufficient. There are times that when you are serving, some people will have to wait until you are done serving others. Then you come to them, not El Shaddai. At once, he visits everybody. He can give someone outside a testimony, someone within the overflow testimony, someone connected from across the globe. At the same time, this is what makes him the Shaddai. And in the name of Jesus, may he move over us. Amen. Shout a believers, amen. amen. Number one, the first key is a reminder. Then we'll build on the remaining three keys. The first key to really receiving from God at a service like this is to learn, and I've said it here, but let it be a reminder, a reminder tonight that all lasting help comes from God and God alone. You will think this is very simple, but it's a reason why many people do not receive. All lasting help. I didn't say all help. All lasting help. Satan can simulate a semblance of help. Men can try to be your source and quite honestly, they can seem to provide some help and succor momentarily. But all lasting help, that means all lasting healing, all lasting deliverance, all lasting breakthroughs comes from God and God alone. Psalm 121 verse 1, God and God alone. God and God alone. I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from whence cometh my help. Verse 2, it says, my help cometh. My help cometh. My help will not remain there. My help is on its way. My help cometh, but it comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. Someone shout from the Lord. It matters where the help comes from. Don't just say I've received help. Where did it come from? If that help came from a herbalist, you are still in trouble. If that help came from men, you are still in trouble. If it came through men, it was correct. If it came from men, through men means they were channels. From men means they are the source. Every source that is not God is limited. It dries. Every source, I don't care the arrogance of the source. If it is not God, it will dry eventually. And sometimes it will dry just when you need it most. That's why the Bible says, vain is the help of man. God moves through men, but help does not come from men. Learn this. God moves through men, but help, lasting help, lasting help comes from God and God alone. Is someone hearing? Very important. In Psalm 60, 11, 
and 12. Psalm 60, 11 and 12. Give us help from trouble. Shout amen. amen. For vain is the help of man. Verse 12. It says, through God we shall do valiantly. For it is he that shall tread down our enemies. I'm telling you sincerely. And I'm saying this from the knowledge of scripture. The privilege of mentorship and experience. Lasting help comes from God. Let no man claim to do for you what only God can do. Even if they are sincere, they are still liars. Men do not lie because they are bad. They lie because they are limited. They do not have the wherewithal to keep their word true indefinitely. Integrity is a product of power, not just intention. It takes power to remain true for a long time. So there are many people who promise you, if you are in trouble, just come to me. They are sincere, but they are liars. Because they also derive their help from someone. The person who helps, the person who wants to help you, if he does not help him, have you come to someone who said, I, I, I sat, last week when I spoke, I was still a commissioner. But unfortunately, I didn't know that in two days, they will remove me. So that thing I said I would do for you, I am sorry. With respect to performance, he's a liar. Not because he's bad, but he does not have the wherewithal it is only God that has the power to keep his word for a long time. So when it looks like you're a person of integrity, it's because you have derived that strength from him. Are we together? All lasting help comes from God. Let no man fool you. I know that many of us here have uncles and aunties and bosses and superiors and spouses and children and parents various men in our lives who have the means for now that we see and we desire and many of us are hoping that as i pray i will call their names and force them to come to you i'm sorry to disappoint you they will still help but take your eyes away from any man and look unto jesus the bible said looking unto jesus when you look unto jesus give him the liberty of selecting who helps you when you don't have expectation from men, there is no disappointment. Disappointment is when you expect Uncle A and Uncle B and Uncle C will be the person. If Uncle A gives me 5 million, Uncle B gives me 5 million, Uncle C gives me 5 million, that's 15 million. Father, give this man no rest. And God says, I don't work that way. The whole 15 million is coming from Uncle Z, who you do not even know. That one comes by my power. And I do it in a way to glorify my name in your life and help the other people know that if you refuse to partner with God, he still has other men. The reason why many people cannot give God glory is because they have begged men too much to pretend it was God that blessed them. They have begged and begged in secret. They have rolled and bowed to Baal. When they get the testimony, they quote it with church talk. And they come and say, see what God has done. It's a lie. When God does a thing, it becomes clear that this one, it is true that he walks through men. But it becomes the, the character of the testimony is such that you will see the hand of God there. May that be your kind of testimony. I'm saying this because some of you, the reason why you never really receive is because there is a text currently in your phone. See me tomorrow. That's what the man said. So when I say receive favor, it doesn't make sense. There is see me tomorrow. Don't allow your pain teach you who men are. He said, I lay me down and I wait because the Lord sustained me. Is it not when your helper is alive that he can help you? I'm not, I'm not wishing doom. But go on and find out from people who had every evidence. The contract was already signed. It was one more signature left. They started collecting loans by faith with joy in advance. Yet they were disappointed. I made up my mind as a person I would never look to any man. Never in my life. God will use men and I will honor the men that he uses. But I will never look to any man. Hmm. Are you learning koinonia? Don't delete the text. Leave it there. Because some of you now don't know what to do with the text. Just leave it there. God can still use the man. But let it be from God. That from God factor matters to God. 
come and tell lies and say God just showed up whereas many of us I mean you you fraternize left and right with Babylon and then when the answer came you now take if his finances you may just take small and bring us a bribe no when God moves it becomes clear that this one is the signature of God oh, oh, oh. My season has come. Oh, 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 my help has come. Oh, 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 my lifting has come. Oh, oh, Shout it, say after me, Father, my eyes are on you. Listen, mean it from your heart. If it takes you closing your eyes to say that, by this is a deliverance service. Some of you is why everything God said from January till now has not happened. You can do anything because you want to receive help from men. It is amazing what believers do in the secret. And then they come to church and say, this is what God did. It's a lie. When God moves, it is clear that this one is God. Say it again. Say, Father, my eyes are on you. Shout it. Say, Father, my eyes are on you. Turn it into a prayer in one minute. My eyes are on you for my children. My eyes are on you for this ministry. I cannot rise by my strength. My eyes are on you for the next season. My eyes are on you for my finances. My eyes are on you for the performance of your word. You will use men, but may it never come from men. You will use men as vehicles, as channels, but never my source. Somebody pray. This is your miracle service already. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. Stop frustrating yourself looking unto men. God will use men. When he uses the men, acknowledge them and honor them. But let it be God leading the men to help you. Not you manipulating your way through the life and the spaces of men. That is idolatry. In Jesus name we pray. This is a very powerful revelation. With all due respect, you are a man of God. Stop looking unto men. No. I'm looking on to this person, this person, help, no, no. They looked on to him. When you look on to Jesus, genuinely, it was God's servant that said, God told him, can you look up and look down at the same time? He said, every time you are looking on to men, never claim you are looking on to me. It is true. And it's a human thing to want to look on to men. Because why look up to God who looks far when there is a man who has it close to you? But as close as you are, look at me. Have you tried to send a text to someone who is close to you? And yet that text did not arrive early. The person is close to you. Your phones are even together. You press send and then it did not go early. And somebody from somewhere sent an email and it even arrived before your text. They call it network problem. Am I right on that? So just because someone is close to you does not guarantee that he will be God over your life and then you succeed. It is when God puts it in their heart, then proximity becomes valuable when God is in the equation. Please help those under the anointing. Proximity, listen carefully, becomes valuable when God is in the equation. If you tear a zinc and bring someone who is sick and Jesus is not there, there are many troubles you have caused. You will fix that zinc. You will suffer from many people and return back disappointed. Proximity is only valuable to men when the God of the Bible is there. But I tell you, for as many who will choose to look unto Jesus tonight, my God will surprise you. Yeah. Hallelujah. I have met extraordinary miracles and manifestations of God's grace and help in my life from unexpected sources 
if I were given the liberty of designing the arrival of my blessings, I would fail woefully. Did you hear what I said? If I was given the liberty by God, that means if God said, my son, as, as my law for you, choose how you want your blessings to come, I would have frustrated my own growth myself. Because it's when the blessings arrive, you will see the wisdom that brought them, that you never would have imagined how it would have come. They looked unto him. Is someone learning? Please sit down. This is how God delivers people in a miracle service. You hear this one word now, you can go back and return. For some of you, when you return home, you take some five minutes to repent. I have made you too small in my eyes, oh Lord. Forgive me. And I have believed in a lie that you are unable to help me. But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And in my heart and with my song, oh Lord, be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. That's your own miracle service. Who told you God cannot give you a house? Who told you God cannot pay rent? You are calculating what is in your account. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Who told you God cannot give you visibility? Who told you God cannot sort the shame? You are owing. You are not the first to owe. You remain thinking like that. That debt would depress you. There are people who have owed to the billions of dollars God brought them out. Shake away that doubt and believe God tonight. Apostles, because you don't know my problem, let me tell you the truth. I submit to you not to insult your pain, but there is nothing happening to you that is happening for the first time. The Bible says the thing that is, is the thing that was, and is the thing that is to come. The things that are written aforetime, the pain that was written aforetime, the limitations, the defeats, the weakness, written aforetime, is for our learning. So that we through patience and comfort of scripture might find hope. Be magnified, O oh Lord. You are highly exalted. And there is nothing you can do. O oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified, oh Lord, be magnified. God for you, when he takes the stage and begins to lead you, you will watch with wonder your own life. Then you will know that he's the one leading you and you will see the glory that comes out of such a life. It becomes clear that this one bar is the hand of God. I don't know why I'm staying here to press it. This, uh, this is what God wants to deliver someone from. Unbelief. The truth is we don't trust God. We think we do. It's a lie. We trust rich people. Huh? We trust gatekeepers. And it will flow through them. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying the dynamics is always from God. If you miss that, you have turned into idolatry. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life. For someone you came to church tonight to repent from idolatry. You have pinned your uncle's picture everywhere in your house. Shouting day and night. This man will not sleep. You are joking. God is not that wicked. The man is praying over his own life. Give me sleep. And you are in your room praying and saying he should not sleep. If you were God, which one will you answer? 
the man is asking God, you are my lifter, give me sleep. And someone else who should be looking on to Jesus, you are looking on to the man and say, God, wake that man, he will not sleep. Abba, look on to Jesus. I'm telling you, God is speaking to someone here. Apostle, there's this contract, so there's this senator. His things are already working. Let me advise you, my dear businessman, I don't mean to insult your experience. Drop that phone contact. Drop your contract on the ground and say, Lord, if you do not help me, help cannot come from anywhere. And watch the God of heaven. You see, this is what makes men, is what leads to human worship. Because when you show men, if you don't help me, I'm dead. It's a lie. It's an insult on the power of God. It's the reason why when the miracles happen tomorrow, they look at you, they say, I made you who you are. And if you don't bow to me this way, I will punish you. But not God. When God lifts you, you have peace. You owe every man thanks, not worship. When God lifts you, you owe the man he used thanks. And then you owe the God who used them worship. But when men become both your source and the vehicle, they don't want thanksgiving alone. They want worship. Are you getting how it works now? When God becomes your source, then the only thing you owe men is deep honor and gratitude and never fail to do that. But when men become your source and the only thing you come and tell them is thank you, they say you are joking. Thank you for what? For being God? No, you don't thank God alone. You worship God. And if a man becomes your God, then you are forced to both thank and worship him. May I never worship any man. Yeah. The three Hebrew boys told Nebuchadnezzar, he said, oh king, matter of honor, we will give you honor. Matter of gratitude, gratitude. But when you come to the realm of worship, you have touched an area that is beyond your jurisdiction. Our God can deliver us. Is someone learning? Number two, let's hurry up. Do you know this already is someone's, is someone's miracle? This is what you came to church to learn. Let God choose the men that help you. You can honestly talk to him. Lord, I know you can use this man. However, let your will be done. And God will say, because you trust me enough to use both the men you know and the ones who do not, you do not know. If Abraham were to choose the person who would prosper him, he would not choose Abimelech. But it was Abimelech God used to give him great gifts. Two, what is the second key? Let me recap that. Number one, you must know and burn it at the back of your heart that all lasting help comes from God and God alone. From God and God alone. Number two, you want to receive from God, especially at a miracle service like this, you must have defined expectations. Defined expectations. Faith is vision dependent. Faith, you can't believe God for nothing. You can't believe God for vague things. Faith is vision dependent. You must have defined expectations. Don't just have expectations. They must be defined. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day. Matthew 6, 10. Our, or 6, 11. Our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, this is what I'm trusting you for. Daily bread. Daily bread. Daily bread. Most believers come to God and you will be surprised, and I say this with all due respect, how many believers are here gathered and the men is scattering, you know, scattered ab ab abroad, following online, who are watching. You ask them, what are you trusting God to do for you? They say, well, I'm just connected to a miracle service. I, I like this man of God. He's about to pray. Let's just release our faith. But what do you want God to do for you? He came to blind Bartimaeus and he said, what do I do for you? Blind Bartimaeus said that I may receive my sight. If blind Bartimaeus said I was hungry, perhaps he would have just given him something to eat. Defined expectation. Father, heal my son from autism. Defined expectation. Lord, I am trusting you for a good job. A job that is able to pay me this much so that I can do this for my family. 
defined expectation give me a man child defined expectation Lord I'm trusting you I'm releasing my faith for a house defined expectation God give me anything you want to oh. mm -mm, mm -mm. that's not how it looks very sincere but the the theology of receiving from God demands defined expectations are we together what do you trust God for father and anointing the spirit of wisdom this is what I'm trusting to rest upon my life I'm trusting that favor will rest upon my life oh so that when it comes you will know it has arrived are we together now yes now God can surpass your expectations in fact he will but the ladder that gets to that surpassing is your defined expectation what are you trusting God for? Lord, I'm trusting you to overturn a verdict. I'm trusting you to bring me healing. I've been diagnosed of cancer, stage two, stage three, stage four. Don't just say heal me. Of what? At least the doctor, medicine has helped you. You've zoomed down what the problem is. If you do not know what the problem is, then that is fair enough. But when you know, you mention it. Is the reason why we guide people by helping them to tabulate their expectations. It's not a ritual. It's to be able to guide you so that you methodically pen down using your own hands, engaging your own faith. And I pray for someone here that everything you came here genuinely believing God for, honestly, may the God of all grace surprise you. So key number two, you must have defined expectations. Let's hurry up. Number three. The third requirement is that you must believe in the Lord your God and you must believe in the vessel that he will use to meet your need. You must believe in the Lord your God as your source, but you must believe in the vessel. If you believe God alone and don't believe in the vessel, you will not receive, surprisingly. The Bible demands that you believe in both God as your source and the vessel as the channel he will use to reach you. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Believe also his prophets, so shall you prosper. You don't believe in the vessels as your source, I have told you. But when it leaves the source, it needs a channel to you. There are times where from the water board, the dam, everything is fine. Water begins to flow there and then something happens and maybe there's a, a bust in a pipe. Do you know that an entire community, perhaps in Abuja here, can be without water? And when you call the water board, they say the problem is not from our end. Everything is fine. We've released water to get to every community. But for some reason, there was a pipe bust somewhere and some persons will suffer. But it is natural to blame the water board. But they will tell you, we will come to fix it. But it's not, our, it's, not, it's not from our end at all. That's how it is. Blessings can leave heaven. But when the, the vessel to deliver it to you does not have that capacity, or you're not believing in that vessel, it affects the delivery. You must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but you must also believe in the vessel that he uses. Number four, the fourth and final key for tonight to prime your faith as we release ourselves into what God intends to give us tonight is you must take actions of faith. You must take actions of faith, actions of obedience. So God would have done his part being the source. The vessel would have done his part being a worthy channel. But the final recipient must do his own part by receiving by faith. If you do not receive, it will stop that flow. I can give you something and you can reject it. As many as received him, even to them that believe on his name, he gave them power. That means not everybody received him, but as many as received him. As 1.8, he shall receive power. Anything to be received can be rejected. You shall receive healing. You shall receive breakthrough. You shall receive open doors. 
you shall receive meaning you can reject it if you don't know how to receive for everyone that asketh receiveth how do you receive by faith by complying with prophetic instructions if an instruction comes to shout by faith it is not mere gibberish it's not playing on your intelligence no oh check yourself do what you couldn't do before you don't say well the pain is still there no you act the bible says peter and john told the man such as i have give i unto you in the name of jesus rise up and walk and the man was still watching there do you know if they left that man there he would have remained crippled forever the bible said peter reached him and carried him up corresponding actions of faith if you are an unsaved person you've not encountered jesus and it's the time for the altar call and you hear the message so nicely and you say wow i love the way this man introduces jesus and you don't come out to actually make that decision you will still go back home unsaved the miracle always happens at the point of obedience someone say actions of faith one more time say actions of faith from checking yourself to receiving by faith believing to going to perhaps you are coming here let's say high blood pressure the medical stand they are there and able and ready while the word of god is coming if you believe that word is for you and you are suffering from bp and you just sit down you're smiling i mean what's the distance between you and the medical stand you go there and tell them i've been prayed for they are people of faith they are not just doctors they are not just professionals they've been trained to believe god they have watched miracles happen right there in their presence oh i came here with hiv and prayer has come now you go and check not every miracle sadly may be verified immediately because there are other miracles that require medical tests but do you do it most believers don't do it apostle my own is bp to not uh, they've stopped you from eating everything because of bp it's almost as if the only thing you take now is water and god wants to liberate you now the prayer comes fire comes from heaven take a step of faith and go and check it if you sit back there and say well i think I'm, I'm really feeling nice you may not be healed you may not be healed you need to take that step i'm feeling a pain it's, it's an excruciating pain or there's a kneecap something they've told me i'll do a surgery in the name of jesus god is visiting us the man of god is ministering now he says check yourself by faith do i do so at the point of releasing your faith you see that the power of god flows are we together Oh, I don't hear very well. I'm blind on both eyes or blind on one eye. Don't sit down and say, will it happen? I know it happened for so, 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 and so. You may be in a situation like our dear sister who shared. You see that now? After the word of God comes, you go and check yourself at the convenience. Meet the medical doctors. When a genuine miracle happens, it does not conflict with medicine. Are we together now? The doctors will confirm it. You will know you have been touched. You will feel you have been touched. You will check your hands. You see that the miracle has happened. And it doesn't matter whether you are in here, all the overflows, or outside, or online. You hear the, the story of the gentleman who had the, you know, the growth there? You would think because he's in Abuja here, he'll be healed in Abuja. With all due respect, only God knows that the word of God had been coming, but perhaps he did not engage as should be. So God decided to route it through Canada. The most important thing is that the power of God got to him. May God not route yours through Canada. May God not route yours through UK. May God not have to route yours when you are watching a rebroadcast. That now that you are here, knowing the power of God is present to heal. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can't you do, Jesus? Creator of the universe, what can't you change? What can't you change, Jesus? Hallelujah. Apostle, mine is not sickness, I'm in debt. How do I respond? Let me tell you how to respond. Number one, I have taught you that all blessings come from God through men to men. Are we together? But that there is an anointing that has to come upon your head. Is that true? That causes the men to come. So your assignment right now, forget about which man will be used. Yours is to receive that grace. So by the time prophetic declarations are coming, if I were you, 
and I were in debt. Let me tell you how. I will open up my heart. When the word comes for your liberation, you receive it by faith and believe that something has rested upon my heart and you look with expectation. You may even verbalize it by faith that as I'm stepping out of Koinonia here, that grace is guiding the right people to me, guiding me to the right people. You get back home, you take 30 minutes to soak that anointing to your spirit. Lord, I have received from your servant. I came for a miracle service. In the name of Jesus, let my Monday be an unusual Monday. I'm showing you how to engage the word. Don't just get home and say, Kai, Koinonia was powerful. Oh. How about you? How was it? nice and that's it you see why it doesn't work you force it to work you provoke it to work by engaging Apostle, so what do i do with my landlord now i'm supposed to see him by 10 a.m tomorrow let me tell you what to do forget about your landlord now and look on to jesus because even if you don't forget about him you are still in that trouble and it's only god that will bring you out am i right on that so you you keep your gaze you really think God cannot speak to someone to help you? And the person does not need to know you are in debt. Not everybody is greedy. There are people who are obedient. When God speaks to them, they obey. It's only that he has not asked them to bless you yet. Because there's something about your attitude that it has not released his power. There are people if God speaks to them, even if it's 100 million, I tell you they will obey in an instant. How many minutes does it take for an alert to get to your phone? The problem most times is we allow the mountain to cover the face of God. So we cannot even see him again. All we see is the mountain. Apostle, I don't have a job. That's my one problem. I'm trusting you to give me a job. Let me tell you what to do. As the word of God comes, whether you came here with your CV or not, it doesn't matter. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I know that there is a portion for me. God is a God of portions. I have taught you that the increase of the field is for all. And even the king is fed from that which comes from the field. That means if you are in Christ and you are an inhabitant upon the earth, there is a portion for you. But it is God who gives men their portion. They don't find it by themselves. No. So your prayer for a job will not be, oh God, give me a job. There is always something for you. It is that God will give you speed and bring it to you. Help, help that gentleman running there. Speed. Are we learning now? Apostle, I am a man of God and in, I love God. Walking in integrity, I love Jesus with all my heart. But ministry is not working. Let me tell you the thing. Three things I'm, I'm missing. I will tell you with all humility. Crash course, ministry 101. The first thing missing is wisdom. And wisdom is not just to execute and get an answer. There is a track record. People don't follow you till they trust you. Even if God calls them to walk with you. They will watch you from afar until they believe you are worth their leadership. Nobody will come to you just because you are anointed. Heal everything you can heal. They will still watch from afar. Your consistency and that track record. You see that now? Jesus was not born on the day men started looking for him. He had been born years before, but his consistency, a day came, it's called the season of appearing. Is God helping someone? I wish I could simulate different problems and tell you how to solve them spiritually because most believers do not know how to engage by faith. Shouting amen is wonderful, but there is a portion of this receiving that is only you and God. Only you and God. Only you and God. Only you and God. Are we together? Apostle, me, I'm not sick. But the kind of demonic activities in my life, I will even choose sickness. Because the way I've been suffering, let me tell you the way out. That one even makes it easy. Huh? Because what you need to do is the hearing of faith. The power that takes away the influence of those demons from your life does not come from you. It comes from God. Your, your own is to believe that there is such a thing as demonic attacks and to believe that there is also such a thing as the victory of Christ. And the assignment of a miracle service like this is through the power of the prophetic to superimpose the victory that has been wrought in Christ experientially to be superimposed over your situation. 
Just believing that without prayer, everything is gone. You will waste your time living in, 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 um, in, in deception. And the demons will be happy that you sustain that mindset. Nothing in the kingdom that comes from God actually arrives the believer's life without his engaging them. Not salvation, not healing, not deliverance. As free as salvation is, if you don't confess Jesus, you will still go to hell. So why will it be different for healing? Why will it be different from deliverance? The logic is the same. If you say Jesus is already saved, I mean Jesus has died. I don't believe I'm a sinner. Unfortunately, that's not how to be born again. You can live in that deception till you go to hell. But when you come, own up, I am a sinner. But I receive of the substitutionary sacrifice. Now that finished work becomes potent there and then in your life. Same thing with sickness. No inhabitant in Zion shall say, I am sick. But experientially, now we do not see all things yet under his feet. When you believe Jesus and you engage the principle that makes for healing, the hearing of faith and actions of obedience, that healing stream finished in Christ becomes a reality in your life now. Yes, he has been made the head over principalities and powers. You should not have any cause again in Christ. You are right. You should not have any demonic attack in Christ. But until that reality is engaged, it remains a finished reality from the spirit while demons oppress you every day and deceive you into believing you are all right. When you are all right, it becomes clear that you are all right. Are we learning? Every truth finished in Christ must be engaged by faith for the experience of that victory to be made manifest. The same grace that saved you is the same grace that prospered you. Why is your account not speaking it now? It does not mean the work is a lie. There is something to engage in partnership to make that experience happen. It's the same thing with deliverance. The same package brought everything. He was the son has eternal life. He who has the Son has eternal life. I have the Son, so I have eternal life. Has God helped someone tonight? So that when we rise to pray, you will be angry in your spirit. I will not go back the way I came. I may not know your problem, except some of them are revealed to me prophetically. But it doesn't matter the situation. You can be angry. If he's healing, you know what to do now. You watch for the word. I may not even have to mention your case. Maybe you are outside, somewhere scattered at the, the back end. It doesn't matter. Once there is the hearing of faith, maybe you are connected in a hospital. You have nothing to lose. You are not paying to receive. So release your heart. Receive. Give God a chance. You have given things of lesser value, lesser integrity a chance. Why don't you give the God of the Bible a chance? Can he make my life? Absolutely. Can he help me? Absolutely. Can he redefine my possibilities? Apostle, my own is that I have made foolish decisions in my life. As I'm seated right now, I don't even know where to start from. Let me tell you where to start from. Follow the pattern of the prodigal son. Come to yourself. Come to yourself. The prodigal son too did not know what to do. Come to yourself. Number two, allow yourself to be assisted. That's why God sent us there. When the prodigal son said to himself, I will arise and go. So when it's time to come and be saved, we connect you to the father. That's where you start from. Then the word of God comes and begins to culture your understanding. Your possibilities are a product of your mentality enhanced by demonic presence. So your deliverance will start by that healing of your spirit called salvation. Then a reorientation of your spiritual understanding through the word of God. That's how your deliverance happens holistically. Listen, when you understand the kingdom system, you will know that there is a way out of everything. There is a way out of everything. There is a way out of everything. I'm going to request that you lay your hands on your head. 
and for the next two or three minutes please cry from the depth of your heart lord i desire a testimony let it be clear that i met you tonight someone pray let it be clear that i met you tonight let it be clear that i met your power tonight let it be clear that your wisdom has rested upon me tonight let it be clear that you heal through my life i know you heal but lord give me an evidence a token tonight outside pray let it be clear through my life that you still anoint men let it be clear through my life that you still lift burdens let it be clear through my life that you still cause men to remember men let it be clear through my life that a book of remembrance can be open a preacher pray a tired mother pray a tired father pray someone in debt pray 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 someone tired of curses tired of demonic operations pray you came here to receive you came here to receive sali kapelando salakrafate malakata leprakata belagata paratos let it be clear through my life that you can place fire upon a man let it be clear through my life that your favor can speak in the life of a man. Let it be clear through my life that you restore. Let it be clear through my... Give me the experience of the world that I become a living epistle after this miracle service. One more minute, you are praying. Across the globe, make sure you pray. Release your heart, release your faith knowing that God is the only helper, the only one who can help men. Longevity of help resides only with the God of the Bible. All lasting help comes from God and God alone. Number two, you must have defined expectations. I'm helping to give definition to your expectations. Number three, you must believe in the Lord and believe in his servant. Believe in the Lord and believe in the vessel that he will use. Number four, be prepared to take actions of faith, actions of obedience. You're receiving the manifestation of God's promises is faith dependent. Insist, I must walk away with a testimony. A testimony of breakthrough, the help of men, deliverance, rising, lifting, a job, promotion, fresh fire upon my destiny. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray.